Today we would like to talk about overcoming the beginner's fear of sparring. Let's go! Today we would like to talk about overcoming the beginner's fear of sparring. And the way we teach sparring, Olympic sparring in Taekwondo, is like a game where you want to kick without getting kicked. That's the essence of it. And before you start doing full contact sparring, I feel like you should do stuff that's easier and you should get familiar with the concepts of distance, with the concepts of defending yourself and literally knowing how to block and how to get out of sticky situations. Because then whenever those situations come up, you're gonna be able to actually stay confident and get out of them a little easier. The biggest shock people have when it comes to full contact sparring is getting hit. Because like Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. So today we're gonna present you some drills that you can do, let's say, before you start the full contact sparring. And hopefully those are gonna get you to be more confident. And we're also gonna talk about fear at the end of this video. This was a request from one of our followers on uh, YouTube, and I'm really glad to just approach this subject. Firstly, before you even start connecting kicks, you want to be familiar with the concept of distance and how to adjust the distance. And the first drill we have for this, and I presented it on the channel before, it's a very fun and very easy drill. It's pretty much playing tag, shoulder, and foot. So if you're in a guarding stance with uh, one of your teammates, you're just gonna try to tag the shoulder or the foot. And while you do that, you always have to use guarding stance and you always have to use guarding stance footwork, all right? So if I'm here, I'm trying to tag her there, there, She's trying, to get it. She's trying to get me back and you can always use angles and use the same footwork like you'd use in sparring. This, without even realizing, is going to offer you a more uh, familiar idea of distance and how do you have to adjust it because when they step forward, normally you always have to adjust by stepping back or by sliding back. It doesn't have to be the exact same move but distance is very important because let's say what you see in beginners when they start sparring you're gonna see stuff like they try to kick and their kicks go somewhere over there because they did not get they cannot grasp the distance the range what is the range in the beginning so i would say that's the most important thing before you even think oh let me connect these kicks well you're not going to be able to do it if your distance is not right all right and the second the an upgrade to this drill is doing it with the pads which actually increases the range, right? Because I have the pads, so now I have a bigger range. And that could happen with uh, your opponent. Opponents are going to be uh, shorter or going to be taller. They're going to have shorter legs or longer legs or longer arms. So you always have to be able to adjust on that too. So if you want to upgrade the drill, you're going to do it with the paddle. So you're going to be here, and it goes in the same idea. One, two, one, and then you switch, and you can always use angles, and you can always move around. Normally when we play this in class, we play it like whoever gets tagged has to do one push-up. So every time you get tagged, you got to do one push-up. The second drill we're doing with beginners is connecting the kicks on the chest guard. And it pretty much looks like this. We're not gonna tie these on, we're just gonna put it on to showcase the drill. And this drill is very important. And what you want to focus on is connecting your foot the right way. Like you don't wanna kick with the side of the foot, you don't wanna kick with your toes, you want to kick with the top of the foot in the right spot. So we're gonna start from a close stance. And the goal here is to kick in the same time and connect in the same time. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So on this drill, this drill also teaches you how to kick while you get kicked, which is pretty uh, average in sparring. That happens all the time. The 
third drill, you can do pre-sparring. Before you start full contact sparring, it's actually a drill where you focus only on blocks. And this is done even by the highest level athletes. You're gonna see them train with no chest guard and they only work with uh, arm guards, leg guards. Feel free to put your on your gloves and your ch and helmet. But right now, we're just gonna showcase the, the arm blocks pretty much. So for example, we have this drill where we stay in front of each other without moving and I attack firstly with my, let's switch feed me Skyla, where I'm gonna attack with my front leg, then she responds with the front leg, then I attack with my back leg and she attacks with her back leg and you have to do the correct blocks. So you have a straight block, a cross block, straight block, cross block pretty much. So if I'm starting right here, I'm starting with my front leg, she blocks, I block, I kick, she kicks. And then you keep going back and forth. So this drill is gonna give you a good good reaction. It's gonna have actually teach you teach your muscles. You're gonna have that muscle memory when it comes to the blocks. All right. So this block should come natural without you overthinking. Like, oh, where do I need to block? Your arm should pretty much move automatic while you spar. But in order to get to that level, you're gonna have to go through drills like this. These are the three drills that you should do uh, pre-sparring, pre-full contact sparring that we recommend you. Of course, there's many other ones. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. In the next segment, I would like to talk about fear. When it comes to fear, let's say you do all these drills but you're still uh, afraid of sparring or you have that strong fear when it comes to your opponent or to your sparring. And what you want to understand is that fear is something very normal that we all have. And it's what makes the difference is the way we use fear. I normally embrace fear. Fear makes me more focused. Fear makes me make uh, better decisions and fear makes me even be faster when it comes to sparring because that just pushes me to be better. So it's always how you let fear affect you. You can let, let it put you down or you can let it motivate you to be better. Being fearless doesn't mean uh, you, that you have no fear. Everyone has the fear even if they say that they don't is the way you use that fear. Being fearless means pretty much just going, being able to go to the challenge, to go to that fear and actually overcome it. So whenever you feel that, make sure you are courageous enough to go through it and that's just gonna make you fearless. That's it for today. We'll see you in the next episode. W1 out.